Hello everybody, welcome to another Valheim video. Today, we're going to be learning everything you can do to manage respawns on your Valheim server or in single player using upgrade world mod. You can even have these things happen when you're not actually on the server yourself. We'll need to start with a clear understanding of what a location actually is in Valheim. Conveniently, there is a crypt. You see it? That's a location. That Stonehenge off in the distance with the locks and the brute, that is another location. The locations are also referred to as points of interest by some players and fan bases. But the world isn't just full of locations. It's also full of rocks and trees and monsters. The rocks and trees are vegetation. And most of what you're about to embark on in this journey is going to be about learning how you can reset these trees, vegetations, rocks, and how you can reset these locations. But why is this even necessary? Why reset a location? That's because in base Valheim, the world gets used up and consumed and doesn't replenish itself. So this really forces people to abandon worlds, start new playthroughs, etc, etc. We'll begin with everything manually, you'll learn the commands and get comfortable with them. Then later on in the video, I'll show you some more advanced techniques and teach you how to schedule everything and automate it. But I don't recommend doing that until you've gotten comfortable running the commands manually. The first thing to understand is that the names of the locations aren't always uh, logical, so you have to look them up. The easiest way to do that is to use some kind of database like this one. This page has all of the Valheim locations, and it's exactly what we need. Now, let's take a good look at this crypt. Which kind of crypt is it? It's one of the longer ones, it's not underground. You get in it that way, it comes with a couple skeletons. So now we're gonna search for crypts here. That's the Hilder crypt, that's not right. Ah, here we have crypt two. It could be this one. But there's also crypt three and crypt four. So, okay, this one, it's not that one. This one is goes underground, it's not that one. So it is actually crypt two. This is crypt two. So if we want to reset just this one crypt, we would go locations, reset, crypt two, and then force. This is going to make sure it happens, even if there's a workbench nearby, and zone, which targets us exactly where we are, and then the most important part, max distance equals one. That way, we're not going to reset all the crypts without wanting to. We're just going to force this one crypt to reset. So now we'll start the command, and then boom! Look at that. Immediate. New crypt, new skeletons. You'll note that the rotation changed, but inside the crypt, it's going to be the same layout as it was before because the crypts have a, a seed, essentially. But don't fret, because if you don't like the layout of a particular location, you can actually remove it and re-add it, and then it'll be in a different layout. So I'll show you how to do that here before we get into the bigger scale stuff across the whole world. First, we'll need to go inside the crypt. That way we can see what it actually looks like. You can note that straight ahead, there's a dead end where a skeleton was. There's a door to the left, and a door to the right. Now we'll go back outside and use a new command. This one is locations remove. I must warn you though, this is a dangerous command if you make a typo. So do not do this unless you are working on a copy of a world. Use backups. We want to reset a location and have it change. We need to remove it from the registry and add it back. So, what we're gonna do is specify the zone that we're in with a max distance of one zone from that and all crypt fours. And then we're going to use the force parameter and start. And the more astute among you will have noticed that I made a typo. This isn't a crypt four, it is a crypt two. So that is why it removed zero locations. Now we'll run it again. 
and this time the location is successfully removed. And so you can see that it just totally vanishes. Even the skeletons are gone. Now what we're going to do is do a location register crypt 2. After you place that command, you'll notice that nothing happens. But don't worry, this doesn't mean something's wrong. It's all part of the process. All you've done is add this location to the registry, but you already removed it. So you have to run something to respawn the location. In our case, we can just use the same command that we used earlier to reset the crypt. Except this time, it'll spawn in as a different seed. So we can't tell from outside because the rotation's always different. But now, after going inside, you can see a door in the front, an opening in the left, and a door in the right. Obviously different than the one we just saw. Now that we've used those commands a little bit, Let's get more familiar with them, because you're going to be using them a lot. As an example, we'll take the reset command that we use to reset the crypt to right next to us. Instead, though, of using locations reset, what we're going to do is locations list. And I'm actually going to remove the force and the crypt. So now it'll run the locations list command on the zone and one zone away. So we're going to run that, and we can now see that in this area, there is a Crypt 2 registered, a Dolmen 3, a Crypt 3, and a Runestone. E9, 27, and boom, look at that. I am the Runestone. You'll be using a lot of console commands, but let's break this down a little bit more. What's going on here with the zone and the max distance parameter? Okay, so let's say I do locations, list, and then max distance equals 1000. It'll be in meters from the center of the world. So if we run this command, we can see all of the locations that are with 1000 meters of the center of the world. And don't worry, it is possible to scroll up. All you have to do is use the page up button on your keyboard. We are not stranded, my friends. This is why we add the zone parameter, because the zone changes the origin of the command to where we are currently instead of the center of the world. In addition, it converts the max distance parameter into then using zones. And this can be a point of confusion, so I want to make sure it's clear with you. Now, I'm confident that you have a better understanding of the parameters zone and max distance. One further note is that you can also use min distance. Let's say you wanted to do something like min distance plus max distance, you could do this if you wanted a certain thing to happen in a certain place, but not everywhere. You can use combinations of different parameters. What we did earlier was the locations remove command. This removes locations from this database. And in addition to that, it removes the pieces of the location from the game world. So let's get practical. Why would you need to remove the locations in a world? For example, when I was building this path, there were a couple times that I built the path over an area that had a location. It looked fine just like this, but then after coming through again, lo and behold, one of the locations respawned and deleted everything that I had built. And speaking of that, you can also make locations that don't respawn because they're not registered. And this might be beneficial to you if you want to make a certain kind of location and allow players to build in it without having to worry about what you just saw happening. This is where the Infinity Hammer feature location comes into play. We're going to use the same name as earlier, and this is going to make it so our hammer spawns a new location when we click. 
so we'll apply it there. But don't be fooled. This may look like a normal location, but this is actually a one-time location. This spot will not respawn when we reset everything else. A tragic accident has slaughtered all of the skeletons and nearby monsters. So let's run our handy dandy locations reset command from earlier and boom, the command ran, two locations reset, but where's the skeletons? Nothing here changed. That's because this is a secret location. The game doesn't know it's here. And there's a wide variety of different circumstances where you may want respawning locations or not respawning locations. But now the power is in your hands. You see how to make them respawn and how to make them not respawn. In addition, you know where to get the list of all of the location names. And that's gonna be one of the most important parts of this journey for you. But now, honestly, this is the easy stuff. Location resets, they're fine. Vegetation resets though, oof. Vegetation resets make a grown man cry. And I don't know if you noticed, but there's a lot of trees in this world. Speaking of that, what if we wanted to know how many trees there are in our world, well, you can actually use a command called objects count. So we're gonna count all of the fir trees that are currently loaded onto the server. And we can see that this world has 30,000 of these fir trees. Wow, that's a lot of them. Another thing to consider is the RAM consumption of vegetation resets. The zones have to be loaded for all of the vegetation resets to get applied properly. This makes vegetation resets a very RAM intensive operation, particularly if you have a large world file. You don't have to have a lot of RAM to do it, but you do have to manage the RAM and understand that if you tell your computer to reset all of the vegetation in a Valheim server, then your RAM is going to go to the dump. When it comes to deleting things, oh, that's a whole other story. Deleting things is instantaneous, pretty much. I mean, honestly, watch what happens if I just remove the fir trees. <laughs> Boom, all 30,000 of those fir trees, they're gone. That's because deleting things doesn't take up the resources. The expensive part is putting them back in. Luckily, we have a command called vegetation reset, which will get rid of all of the vegetation of a certain type, and then put it back only in its original location. So I'm going to use a vegetation reset on those fir trees that we just removed. We're going to use the same parameters from earlier, zone and max distance. This will fill the area around us with our trees. Start, and we can see that, uh, well, nothing happened. Did you figure out why? Well, it's quite likely to be because I didn't do a force parameter. This means that the location, the vegetation reset ran with player base protection. So we're going to rerun the command, but this time we're just going to force all of the trees to respawn regardless of if there's a base there or not. And here we are, they are starting to pop back up. You see that over there? There we go, our trees are all coming right back to us. And it really is as simple as that. You just have to understand how it all works and make sure not to overwhelm your computer. Vegetation resets are the most resource intensive operation that you can perform. So always keep that in mind. But they allow you to do so many things. So let's move on to why vegetation resets are so important. Because believe it or not, it's not so that you can respawn all the trees and make everything look pretty again, even though that is great. The real reason is because Valheim's progression is all about mining metal. And metal is a vegetation. This pretty much means that you're gonna end up with a bunch of areas that have holes and dug up metal. In particular, this happens most with silver and with copper. And it's really easy to reset, but it does take some time. Just like when we looked up the locations in a list, we're going to also look up the vegetation in a list. Because vegetation isn't just leafy greens, it's also rocks and pretty much every object that you can see. And we're looking for the silver. 
Here we go. It is called Silver Vein. That means we can take our previous command with the fir tree and change it to Vegetation Reset Silver Vein. Except this time, we're only gonna use a tiny little max distance. I want it to just be the one I'm looking at. If we were to run this command, it would only respawn the silver. It's not going to fill the hole. So we need to add the command terrain and then the meters that you want cleared. We're gonna go with 12 and then run the command. And we can see here that that did reset the silver nodes, but unfortunately it wasn't big enough. So I've moved things around so that we can make sure that this is big enough. I've exposed the silver vein and now let's test again, except this time instead of terrain 12, we're going to use terrain 15. There we go, we have reset some of the terrain, but as you can see, it still wasn't enough because we have this weirdness here. So let's redo the command, but instead of terrain 15, let's go with terrain 20. Boom, there we go. Now everything is back to normal. It looks like we need quite a lot of space. And that's how you reset the metals. You're also going to pair them with that terrain command so that you reset enough of the terrain that it looks natural again. Not just for the sake of getting resources, also for other players' sake. It's quite immersion breaking when they explore and all of the metal has already been obviously taken out of the world. People usually don't like that. You can also respawn all of the other things in the same way, but you really don't need to use that terrain command as well. I encourage you not to use the terrain command unless you're absolutely confident that you should be using it. For example, let's say there was a path here that a player had made well, the terrain command is just gonna completely override it. We can do the same thing with the copper nodes. As you can see, there's one behind me. So now we've worked our magic on this beautiful copper node, made it look how it probably will eventually. And then we're gonna take that same command from earlier, except instead of silver vein, we're going to use rock for copper. And there we go. We see that our terrain has been adjusted. And honestly, at this point, you're armed with all the knowledge that you need. This is how you keep Valheim Worlds humming. This is how you keep the skeletons rolling and the locks stomping. It's all about that upgrade world mod. It gives you so much control over all of the vegetations and the locations in your game. But for now, let's just enjoy the view and contemplate what we've done. Now you understand the basics of respawning locations and vegetation. I've shown you how to limit the function to just the zone you're in or from the center of the world and explained a bit about how that works. So let's get you a little bit more comfortable with what some realistic commands for a server actually look like. I'll show you the commands that run on the Path of Magic server that we've been developing. I separate commands into two categories. There's soft resets and hard resets. Soft resets will avoid things like workbenches and player bases. On the other hand, a hard reset will delete everything that is in the spot of the location and then put the location back. So if you built something, as you saw with the bridge earlier, it will get wrecked. I really encourage you to use hard resets on all of the dungeons and the goblin camps. And if you want, also on the Durnween fragments, because on a vanilla server, there's only one player that gets each of them. But now you can make them respawn. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Let's break down this command. It's good to have a little file that you keep your commands in. That way you can just copy paste them like this. And we can see that we have a list of a bunch of different locations. This is a global command, so it just runs on the entire server. With location resets, you really don't have to worry about limiting them as much. So you'll often have a list of the soft resets you wanna perform and a list of the hard resets you wanna perform. People will play in your world and as they play, you'll know which areas need to be respawned. So you can just log into the world, run your command every week or two weeks or every couple days, depending on what people are doing. 
keep going, and you won't need to go through the hassle of what I'm about to show you, which is learning a whole other mod that allows you to schedule all of this. And that mod is Cronjob. Cronjob allows you to schedule things, but in order to get really comfortable with it, you have to understand what crons are. After you put cron on your server and launch it for the first time, you'll get this cron yaml file and you'll be greeted with your automation schedule. In my case, this is the Path of Magic schedule, and there's like five or six different routines, including world restarts, server shutdowns, loose item removal, loose logs removal, key management, saving more often. As I mentioned earlier, there is a hard reset for palm locations and a soft reset for palm locations, but it's not just that. There are also metal resets on different days. And depending on the size of your server, you'll have to know how much time each command tends to take. And now all that there is to learn is the format that you need to use for cron. But the easiest way to think about it is there's the join section at the top, and then you have the jobs, which are performed on a cron schedule. Cron is not something made for Valheim. It's actually a way of scheduling that's used all over the place. Let's say you want to figure out a cron schedule for once every other Thursday. We can just go every other Thursday cron schedule. And then if we're lucky, there we go. So we can see here that this command would run at midnight UTC time on Thursday. If we wanted to change it, we could make it run at mid-afternoon UTC time on Thursday, and then put it here with some quotation marks around it, just like that. However, I wanna keep the one I had before, so I'm not gonna do it. And now you understand that cron schedules commands to a specific time of day or of the month, etc, etc, etc. Personally, I find that metals do well to respawn once every week or once every two weeks, and locations do well to respawn twice a week. And as your final lesson, you should probably get used to using the world clean command because when you reset locations, it does some little things that aren't super important, but are worth addressing. It's also ideal to turn the server off after it finishes the restart and then turn it back on. This is a necessary step to have the smoothest experience for your players. And it, as weird as it sounds, it is actually okay for the players to be online when the resets happen, Although, if they're in the wrong place at the wrong time, uh, they might fall out of the sky and die. And that's it for this video, everybody. If you want to support my work, or get your own dedicated Valheim server, then consider using my link, jpvalheim at zap hosting. I've used Zap Hosting for multiple years at this point, and they've always treated me quite well, even before I was an affiliate with them, and they've been very friendly, and any time an issue came up, they worked with me to resolve it after I reached out through their customer service. So I can recommend them to you in good faith. Zap offers Bepinex servers, which come with Bepinex pre-installed and ready to go, so you can just drop Expand World prefabs in and get started on your wizardry career. Alternatively, you could like this video or any other video about about Valheim, and that's going to tell YouTube that you want to see more of this kind of content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye bye!